In today's video, I'll show you how I clean the EGR valve on my Mercedes diesel Sprinter. If you're a diesel Sprinter owner, one thing you should consider doing is to periodically clean the EGR valve. I'm not mechanically inclined and I rarely work on my own vehicles, but I have been doing this cleaning myself and I recorded the last one to show you how doable this is, even for an idiot like me. These are the tools you'll need. A socket wrench with an extension, a T10 six-point Torx socket. I didn't have this and will probably pick up a set in the future, but in a pinch, my 8mm hex socket also worked. A flathead screwdriver, a brush, paper towel, optional rubber gloves, pliers, but this you may not need depending on your van, and lastly, a carb cleaner of some kind. I'm still on my first can of gum out. They're not a sponsor, and I don't know if there are brands better than this, but so far it's been working for me. So I'll link this and other tools I've used in the description below. To start, let's locate your EGR valve. Walk up to the van, and it's right here between the coolant reservoir and the oil filler cap. There are a total of five screws we need to remove, one holding the oil filler neck in place, and four on the EGR valve. First, remove the single screw on the oil filler neck. I always keep the screws I take off somewhere secure, like a Ziploc bag or a box. Then rotate the neck out of the way. Next, depending on your van, if this hose clamp is blocking you access to that screw, use your priors to carefully rotate that clamp aside. If you're lucky like me and the clamp is already out of the way, start removing all four screws. While I'm doing this, let's talk about why it's a good idea to clean the valve. I'm not a mechanic or engineer, and I assume most of you aren't either, so you don't really need to know what this valve does. Just know that over time, a lot of gunk will build up. How long? Depends on a lot of things. I dragged my feet for a long time and didn't do my first cleaning until 28,000 miles, but what happened to me was my van started choking on startups. It happened two or three times, including one time when the engine just stalled on me at low speed and the check engine light came on briefly. Fortunately, it was in my driveway. Now, it's true Mercedes will, in some cases, replace your valve under warranty, but one, that's under each dealer's discretion. Two, it doesn't solve the fundamental problem, and this buildup will happen again on the new valve. Three, what if my engine dies in the middle of nowhere? So I opted to do the cleaning myself, and it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. And as soon as I cleaned it, that stalling problem went away. Okay, next, use your flathead screwdriver to pry that white plastic locking tab back a bit without removing it. That's really important because while recording this, I forgot and I pulled the white tab out completely. It's not the end of the world, but it was a pain in the ass to try to push it back in later when I was putting things back. With that locking tab partially pulled out, you should be able to push the entire tab down and pull the electrical connector out. Just stash it to the side and out of the way. Finally, it's time to pull the top of the EGR valve out. This will be the hardest part of this whole cleaning process. If you waited a long time between cleaning, the top might be really stuck on there. It took me almost 10 minutes that very first time to get it off, but I don't want to scare you because I didn't know what I was doing back then and I was really careful not to break anything. Now that I've done it a few times, it comes off much easier. This is the trick I found. You see this ledge? This is where the top and the bottom comes apart. I found that if I spray a little bit of this carb cleaner all around along this ledge, wait a little bit, let the cleaner seep in and does its magic, then wiggle the top or use a hammer to gently tap the top, then spray some more carb cleaner and repeat these steps, the top of the valve will eventually come loose and pull off. Just be careful, only use brute force on the metal part so you don't break the hoses. Once you pull the top of the valve off, remember to also carefully remove the gasket. You can set it aside and clean it later. Next, stuff some paper towel down that opening to prevent stuff from getting in and then start cleaning the actual EGR valve. You can see how much carbon is built up here, and this valve could potentially get stuck without cleaning. 
You want to clean this thoroughly in and out. What brush you use is up to you. I used a car detailing brush the first time. It worked well, but I also found it to be a little bulky. I switched to a bottle cleaner this time so I can reach in there. I'll link both brushes in the description below, but I think this really is going to be a personal preference. You might have to try it out and see which one you like better. By the way, in case you're wondering why this seems to be a common issue with Sprinter diesel vans, I asked the same question to my mechanic. He told me, and I'll emphasize this is not an official answer from Mercedes, I cannot confirm the accuracy of what he told me, this was just off the record chit chatting. He told me that in newer Mercedes diesel engines, the carbon is designed to be burned off, but the engine in this Sprinter was originally designed in the mid 2000s. Since the engine came to market, changes had to be made to pass the ever-tightening emission standards. With an older engine, some of these retrofit parts probably just doesn't work as well as a fresh engine design. So I'd be curious to see if this is still an issue on the brand new 4-cylinder turbo diesels. Alright, don't forget to clean that gasket. After everything is thoroughly clean, now it's just a matter of reversing course and reinstalling everything. Put the gasket back on, make sure it's lined up to all the correct holes. Put the EGR valve straight down and reinstall the screws. I like to loosely screw them all on first to hold the top in place, then go back and tighten each one. Next, reinstall the electrical cables and the white locking tab, then swing the oil filler neck back, put the screw back in place, and congratulations, you are done! The first time I did this, it took me over an hour to do, but now I can do it in 40 minutes. And I can probably do it even faster as time goes by. Now it's time to start the engine and test it. You'll be amazed at the instant improvement. The van runs a lot smoother. You can literally feel the reduction of vibration in the steering wheel. The transmission also shifts a lot smoother. You'll see an improvement in MPG. And you just saved yourself at least 700 bucks. Yeah, that's how much my dealer quoted me for EGR valve cleaning. So how often should you clean it? I think it's really up to you. Like I said, my van ran for almost 28,000 miles before I cleaned it for the first time. But I do it more frequently now at about every 8,000 miles. Just because it's so much more pleasant when you have a clean EGR valve. And that's how I clean my EGR valve. I'm not a mechanic, so if you have any suggestions for me or if you spotted a mistake, please comment below so we can all learn. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you found this video helpful. Consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this and I will see you next time.